like one piece so that like people be like get like wet in the drawers and buy it. <laughs> um, very beginning. If you're getting too hot, you can just get like naked. It's not like illegal here, right? <laughs> <laughs> You know, then we just do a selfie, and then like all of us will get famous. It's <laughs> <laughs> like how you get famous by taking your clothes off on like social media. Yeah. Is that what Kim Kardashian did? <laughs> <laughs> so how about this global like immigration shit, man? It's like we're like fucking with like everybody who's trying to cross the border now. It's like I've decided, okay, we've had enough. We've had enough workers. We have enough people in our own country to exploit, so we do not need to import anymore. <laughs> so Australia is like cracking down. I mean, the fucking DR. Like DR is not even like one of those countries that can boast the, 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 the fucking like fucked up identity of being first world. <laughs> but you're going to like stop people from coming if you go, what the fuck is that? Like neighbors, you know what I mean? What if we started, you know, preventing Canadians from coming to the US? Really <laughs> <laughs> it's so interesting, like, I mean, when, when you just, like, throw, like, a real ridiculous idea out there, people are like, what? Because <laughs> all of your faces were like, what the fuck is she talking about? <laughs> Why would that be um, a thing? <laughs> yeah, but it's interesting, like, how people, like, even the most progressive of us, how we think of, um, fuck, man. <laughs> I can see how long I haven't read anything. <laughs> so my kid is, Zuri, can you turn around and say hi to everybody? Like that always gives me mad sympathy. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody read this book? Yes. yes. Um, I'm trying to find... <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so I wasn't there yet, so it must be before that. I wasn't there yet, so it must be before that. I walk right in and I'm like, yes, I think I found it. <laughs> okay, so it was before that. This reading had better be good. Fucking like sexy intellectuals, also sexy. People have like, you know, short hair that's like colored all kind of funny colors. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people walking around smelling like patchouli with like head wraps, <laughs> you know, with like fucking natural hair. Discussions are happening in class like, um, is this a chair? <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, you know, am I here? Are you dreaming me? Am I dreaming you? Dreaming me? Dreaming me? You? <laughs> so you know, where I'm, in, you know, I'm taking like philosophy 101 classes. I'm like all into like the whole philosophy shit, psychology. It's all like sexy. It's like, oh my god, this is so like you know interesting. You know, and all the girls that are in my class are really interesting because you know they're like questioning things, like questioning things. <laughs> I myself, you know, I've been raised a good Christian girl, 
I found the courage to like leave the fucking like church behind at 16 or so. I'm like, listen, this shit is not for me. Jesus seemed just to be looking out for the boys. I'm not really into that shit, so like I'm gonna try some shit new. I'm not sure what I'm gonna try, but I'm at university. It's also sexy. Women are like, you know, smelling like mad patchouli. <laughs> Uh, you know, like, uh, you know, the natural hair, the whole sandal, the whole, like, you, just, uh, you know, I'm like, how are you? No, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> all of this is happening on campus. <laughs> just, just mad sexiness. And we're all at that age, you know, like 21, 22, when you know, those are basically poking everybody in the eye. <laughs> Your flesh is just like, you know, at the peak of its, like, please look at me, and if you would like to stroke me, it's a possibility. You know? <laughs> So I go into like the I go into like the class and they're discussing all kinds of things like you know you know society is constructed and like humanity is constructed and every fucking thing is constructed you know and I'm feeling like all deep you know what I mean we're discussing fucking Descartes and like fucking like everything it's just like oh, it's so sexy everything is just so super sexy and then somebody says to me you should listen to this girl her name's Anne Franco. <laughs> And then, oh, yeah, there's this other girl called, like, Sarah McLaughlin. And Tony, like, um, like, you know, Tracy Chapman. And, like, you know, just all of this shit. Like, and then maybe, like, you hear one song where you're, like, did she say she? <laughs> <laughs> and so you, like, you know, rewind the tape and, like, play again. And you're, like, think it's she. She said she. <laughs> no, but maybe it's C. No, but I think it's she. <laughs> So this is just going on. And somebody in the class, um, I remember the moment when somebody's like, um, I think that, you know, I think that, you know, sexuality is constructive. And I was like, the fuck is she talking about? <laughs> Everybody knows God made Adam and Eve. I mean, that's what the fuck he said he made. In the fucking Bible, that is what he said. He made Adam and he made Eve. Right? They're supposed to match. All my life I've been told they match, right? Then I you know, I've questioned it, but you know, what were the other choices? I mean really what were the other choices? They were not given to me in conversation or any other thing. And then I was like, oh, okay, and then somebody's like, you know, I mean, you know, the even the even the idea of a deity is constructed. I'm like, Jesus Christ, let me move sadly. <laughs> Somebody is gonna get fucking struck by lightning. <laughs> not going to be me, thank you very much. <laughs> And then, you know, this is just going on, and I remember, you know, I remember the exact moment I knew I was a gay. <laughs> because, I'm sitting in the class, and you know, all of us are angsting about all this, you know, philosophy and whatever, because, you know, everybody wants to deconstruct their reality, because nobody's really happy with their reality, unless they're in the first three months of a relationship, right? <laughs> Basically, by the time you reach month six, you're like, Jesus Christ, what am I doing here? How can I get up? And they've gone ahead and fucking legalized marriage and all. <laughs> Which means I no longer have a ready excuse. So everybody wants to deconstruct their reality, right? So I'm like in the middle of like, you know, the angsting, the trying to deconstruct, you know, I'm in love with all the drugs with glasses because, you know, whatever. They just like look like they would just be like crazy librarian or whatever. <laughs> So I'm like there, we're doing the, we're doing the whole like, we're doing the whole um, whatever. And one girl is chewing on a pencil, and she's chewing on a pencil, and she's talking about Descartes. Hi, hi. I, I remember like feeling like when she said the word desire, like something like fell from like my stomach to like my vagina, <laughs> and I was I couldn't understand why she was like and. I remember the loop in my head, you know, like, you know, because if, if I was being interviewed by Oprah, <laughs> she would say, Stacey Ann, <laughs> that was your aha. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I literally heard the sentence in my head, like, I wish I was that pencil. I wish I was that pencil. She was like, really good. Like, literally, I was like, oh my god, like, if I were that pencil, I mean, I'd be happy, right? So I went outside and I was like, oh my god, I'm having a crisis of conscience. What's going on with me? Like, you know, my vagina is wet. Why would my vagina be wet when she's talking about desire? Like, 
I mean, what, can anyone explain it to me? Like, I don't understand. Like, why? What part of the job you want? <laughs> so, I mean, you know, I kind of come to the, I come to the, um, the, the conclusion, I guess, <laughs> that I'm a gay. <laughs> and, 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 and my very good friend Raquel was in Jamaica at the time, at university. And, um, I, you know, I was really dying for somebody to come out to. And I was like, I have to come out to somebody. Somebody should know. Sorry. So, you know, I have to, I have to come out to somebody. I have to tell fucking somebody I'm a gay, right? Because you know, you can't really hold on to that kind of secret for so long. Because you know, I tell you that it's gonna give you like, I don't know, fucking goita. I don't know. Hold on to the secret too long. <laughs> Your nipples start to get like you know green. You know your emissions from your vagina start to become purple. You know, when you poop, you like, you can't stay in the bathroom with it because it is so foul. And like, that's what happens when you're like holding on to something too much. So I instinctively knew that something had to like you know I had to vomit the damn thing out of me at some point. So I'm like Raquel, meet me in so and so and so. So we're like she meets me and I'm like okay, I just have to tell you that um I I I um. I just that I'm sort of maybe, um, you know, I'm, um, you know, I have a thing for, I mean, I think I'm, I'm, I think I like girls. And she goes, oh my god, I like girls too. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, oh my god, how unusual is that? That I'm a gay, and you're a gay, and that we've been friends forever, and like, blah, blah, blah. And we're like, and now that I'm older, I'm like, it's not that. Neither of us say much. Are you familiar with such a situation? <laughs> when we get to her room, she locks the door behind her and asks, so what do you want to do? <laughs> I'm not sure what to say. And so I tell her, um, whatever. I mean, anything you want to do is fine with me. <laughs> I sit on her bed and watch her change into t-shirt and shorts. I get the feeling that she's flirting with me, but I'm not really sure. <laughs> then she sits next to me and she puts her hand on my leg. I pull her to me and I place my lips against hers. I spend two hours in Tanya's room that afternoon. I want to make love, but she tells me, I'm not a lesbian. When I try to tell her how much I like her, she laughs and says, Stacey, I'm just curious. This is an experiment. 
I chose you because people, you know what people say about you, they, you know, they say you're that way, but don't get too attached, man. During class, I fantasize about having sex with Tanya. I keep hoping she will invite me to her room again, but she doesn't. And I spend the night crying and writing copious numbers of love letters I know I will never send. Then I wonder if I'm just curious too. Then I just want to sleep with a girl so I can get to say that I did sleep with a girl or just so I can say like I did try. But I'm not convinced when I spend the days hoping, hoping that Tanya or Belinda or Francine will take a chance and invite me up to the, to, to the dorms to experiment. But everyone seems a little afraid or disgusted, even the ones who start out flirting with me. When Brandt, my best boyfriend, and I had to tell you about Tria, there were three of us. There was um, Annabella, Brandt, and me. And I'm like desperately in love with Annabella. Annabella is desperately in love with Brandt. And Brandt is desperately in love with me. <laughs> every walking moment together. I don't know how many of you are old enough to know the movie Threesome. We went to it together all the time. When Brandt, when Brandt catches me watching the pretty English major, Serana, he pokes me with his pencil. I see you transform your, transfer your ardor again, Miss Chin. It's such a good thing I'm not too attached to you. You're so disloyal. So shut the fuck up.